All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Welcome to episode 330 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, admin on the KISS FAQ message board. If I've banned you this week, I do apologize. Um, today I'm joined by Skidmark. A live cat map. <laughs> Andrew. Oh, well, you're not even going to say hi now. Okay, fine. Well, I mean, I'm just, you know, I, I misquoted uh, a Motley Crue quote, and that's how I came with Skidmark. Because if you remember, at the end of the Motley Crue behind the music, Nikki was like, oh, I just want to be a little scar in music. And I was like, well, I just want to be a Skidmark. And so it's <laughs> taking a life of a song. Kind of appropriate. Um, Ken, 69th Blizzard. Hello there. And Marcus Almighty Mark. Let's just do a I'm little... I'm back. Yeah, you back. Have, you've have. you been back. away and you've been busy. We'll get to some of your your extracurricular activities after we do some of the kind of mm-hmm. news items. Um, and today I wanted to mention... Well, we'll be mentioning a couple of albums, I guess, today. Uh, our friend, or my friend at least, um, Buffalo Rock City. A new tribute album going to be featuring 13 too. tracks of great musicians from the Western New York area. Now, if you go to buffalorockcity.com, you can see the art that they've had done. Which, oh uh, God, who was it? Who was it by? I have the have the site up. I, I can't. I can't remember because I initially I saw the artwork before I was even able to get it from my friend, <clears throat> who is a uh, Ace Clone on the board, John That's Jeffrey. Right, John, yeah. great, great, great guy. I see him at every Kiss show that I go to up there, and uh, yeah, cool. He sent me uh, the, he sent me a, a clip of uh, one of the tracks. He sent me Jungle, and that uh, sounds great. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited. About it. Yeah, incredible actually. And uh, it's pencil and inks by Kevin Conrad and color colors by Ben Prenovost. And I'm I'm sure I butchered your name, but if I did, I do apologize. And it, it's very cool. I mean, there's uh, people performing on this who perform with Ace, Alice Cooper, Doro, except Gene Simmons, Guns N' Roses, Journey, Ozzy, Hollywood Vampires, Goo 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 Goos, um, Michael Jackson, Toto, Dead Daisies, Paul Stanley, and Beatlemania. So the artwork it pays tribute to Buffalo, um, which is obviously kind of the whole key. And you can check out a video. They've got a, web, uh, a Facebook site they've got a web page they've had Very a video cool. out which is of course uh robbie takak from uh what band's he goo goose 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 doing hard luck woman that's been out since september so uh, go check that out and then uh i think i'm pretty sure kiss fans are going to appreciate the dedication and uh attention to detail and the quality of this album yeah i mean it's cool i i remember back to the early days of KISS online presence. And I'm talking about like, what is it, KLOS? There was, or was it, yeah. what, what were those K-A-L-L. Was it, was it K-A-L-L. KISS Army K-A- Online, that was uh, you're, Kathy you're, Labonte. Yes, I remember seeing those and people getting pretty jazzed about those. So uh, this kind of takes it back to that. And, uh, and it's cool, you know, the guys are cool. The artwork is freaking awesome. I would buy a 12 by 12 flat of just <clears> that artwork. Maybe yeah. not so much the text, up in there but just that artwork is freaking awesome yeah just do the artwork and do you remember that norwegian one that had ken kelly do the cover yes i do as well the scandinavia i I don't remember which one it was norway or scandinavia but uh very cool stuff so it's great to see you know people still getting into it and john's a great guy known him for many many years online um okay let's move on to another record and uh, don't roll your eyes, Andrew. Eric Carr, Rockology, Picture Disc, limited to a thousand copies. Have you seen the Rockologists' um, cover? They're, they are not. It's actually being done by. But this is not by, by them. This is, is by It is not by them. Company. It is by Lin, LinsleyRecords.com. And again, you can yeah. find this on Facebook. It has been posted on the Rockologist website. But it's limited edition Picture Disc, celebrating or marking Eric Carr's final live performance with Kiss. And on the back side is a photo, which I believe is from that show specifically of him doing. I don't think it's from that show. I could be wrong, uh, but I know the photographer was Matt's. Batsford, I believe. I'm Batsford. sorry if I mispronounced his name. Yeah. He was involved with some of the, the photo work with the um, Kiss Classified book. 
So awesome guy, awesome photo. Uh, there's he has a couple photos from from that time period. Uh, very very cool. I think the actual disc looks cool. So uh, and uh, limited two thousand. I understand it's more than half sold out already. Yeah. So Lindsley Records, and again, you can find this on you know the websites. I'm not going to put links to all this stuff in the the show notes because it's just too long. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Mark. What's going on with oh, your yes. album? Um, yeah, it's it's selling in pre-order right now. CD, uh, CD pre-order, and it's on my Bandcamp page, and it's going really well. In fact, the thing that I'm finding uh, rather interesting about this is that it has awakened people buying my back catalog. Like uh, I've I've been surprised how many people have been ordering. Like they'll order the new one. And then all of a sudden, I get a message a few minutes later. Is it okay if I order uh, some of your back catalog? I'm like, well, yeah. Just, um, why wouldn't I let you? You know. So <laughs> they're all kind of like, you know, yeah. Okay. Is, is it cool if I can we get it all together? Kind of shift. I go, listen. Whatever you want, you're the you're the buyer. You know. So whatever you want is what I'm gonna do. It was okay. So once it's all done, can you ship it? And I have to send like at least eight people like to complete like every single CD, which is like fantastic. I'm so happy that. People are doing that because I've been getting a lot of uh, people that have joined the Bandcamp page later than when those albums came out. So some of them are now like, you know, okay, well, it's only five bucks he's making it for, so why not grab it now, right? So it's going really good. Um, Tomorrow I got uh, a big radio show thing with Check It Out with uh, DJ Peter Prague. He does a show out of uh, Wales in, you know, the other side of the ocean there. And uh, he's playing the whole album on his show, and I got to be in the chat room. And he did it last time with my with the Dark Monarchy, and it went over really good. Like tons of people were in the chat room, and so it, it went really good. And uh, yeah, so just keeping that rolling. And uh, just for people who have been asking, the vinyl pre-order will start in January. Nice. Hey, and that's your, al- cool. your album actually comes out this weekend digitally, doesn't it? Drops yeah. on November the 7th, and people can find Mark at projectgemini.bandcamp.com. You can find plenty of links in the FAQ forum uh, from the Lucas Rock and Roll podcast episode I did with uh, Mark. So that'll be very cool. And sorry, I just wanted to say one thing. Uh, thank you to the doctor on the uh, KISS FAQ board. He's been very supportive of this release. He went, in, went out and bought a bunch of stuff as well. And he's been really cool and we've been messaging back more. So thank you, Mr. Doctor. The new Project Gemini album in the year. 3073, book two, 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 is coming November the 7th, 2020. Pre-orders for physical CDs start November the 1st. Visit projectgemini.bandcamp.com for more information. Don't miss out on this fantastic slab of Canadian aggressive rap. Very nice. All right, That's I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna pimp mine just to show you. It's real. Aerosmith nice. book is gone into its first test print, which I will then scr- I will scribble in to make corrections and stuff. So wait, hold on. So basically, it, what? Hold on, hold on, big. hold on. Just hold the phone one second. Yeah. So okay. Basically, I, what you're I telling you're me going. is that once the book goes to printer, you it comes back to you for additional corrections, and then you send it back. No. <laughs> no, because because I'm self-published, I can print out as many books a- along the way as I go. So I just wanted to get a, a feel for the formatting and some of the things I'm trying to do inside and see if pictures are looking good, uh, you know, if things are coming together well mm-hmm. before I even get to that stage. So, you know, I won't do a ton of different ones. I've got, you know, done two copies of this. One I usually give away later on, you know, to if I do a podcast appearance and I've got something to throw out because I expect that cover art to change. Uh, I was talking to someone in the past week and hopefully, you know, uh, we'll come to an arrangement 
and have proper artwork done. And if not, I've got a fallback. Um, you know, I like obviously. what you've done with it so far already. Well, I like it, that a lot. it totally riffs yeah. off the live bootleg, you know, album, yeah. which I love that cover, even mm-hmm. though it's just so kind of cheesy. So it, it, it does kind of tie together with the, the live history of the band, which just covers a 73 to 85. And I'll probably end up chopping a lot of sections out of it. I mean, I'm going to have outtakes because I don't know if I'm leaving the full Joe Perry project in there or whether I'm going to leave Done With Mirrors in or cut that out because that's switched over to the Geffen. Uh, but we'll see. You know, so i got to see outtakes, how big it gets. Sorry, the outtakes, you mean like what you did with the Kiss one where you had those, those separate little books of each album? Yeah, I, I, I would probably do that with the Joe Perry one. But, I loved those. But Mark yeah. Bell just put out his diary, so you know that takes care of the whole Once a Rocker era. And while I've got a lot in mind, you know, of actual details from all the shows, you know, Mark was actually the singer. <laughs> you know, you don't want to you don't want to yeah. step on his toes because he's a really cool guy anyway. All right, enough about Aerosmith. Um, anyone bought any Kiss shit this week? Ooh, me, 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 me. Okay, Andrew <laughs> would like to talk. Um, man. <laughs> um, I actually didn't buy it this week, but I did actually get it this week. I found on... I didn't know that all these existed. I thought there was just, I think, the Gene or Paul one. But I got a full set of the Spin magazine posters. So, nice. Um, let's just... Gene... Are those legit or are those Archer editions? No, they're they're one hundred percent legit. One hundred percent legit. It's how, actually the how only, big are they? The only, uh, so here, that's that's. I knew where you were going with that. So when I bought it, they said that the size was twenty by thirty, which is basically you can get a frame off the rack at that size. But these are actually twenty four by thirty. So if you put it in a twenty four by thirty six frame, you got three inches on the top and the bottom. It looks ridiculous. So. While I thought it was going to cost me less than a hundred bucks to get these all up in frames and put in my room, I'm at a point now where I have to get frames custom made. That's going to cost me, you know, upwards of sixty dollars per frame, and I just, I just don't know if I want to do that. I also didn't really want to buy posters any longer that I was just going to store in the 1978 Kiss trash can. I wanted to buy a poster and be able to hang it up, but. You know, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So I really like them. I mean, anyone that knows me knows I'm super into the reunion tour. It's my favorite tour for the band. It was when my fandom was kind of set into overdrive. So I was psyched to get those. I've never seen all four of them together like that. And uh, I thought it was cool. They had a great price, too. So I just got to figure out what I want to do with them at this point. So I got a question. I got an answer. Uh, um, so back in the day, there was that rumor, I don't know if that's true or not, that when they made those album covers, those uh, magazine covers, that you know they said it was even Steven, that all four members had even amounts of the magazines came out, and then they said, no, no, it wasn't, that it was mainly uh, Gene, and I guess Paul was it, that had the most amount, and the rest of them were only like 10% each. Do you think it's the same with the posters? Do you think there's more of the Paul and Gene floating around than the other two? It's gotta be. I was in a record store in San Francisco at, at this time last year and I walk in and they have no kiss stuff, but they have those, they had the gene poster just kind of plastered on the wall. Mm. And, uh, you know, I had seen, like I said, I, I had seen the gene and Paul ones. Actually, I think I, I only had seen the gene one more often than any of the other ones. Mm. So at the time I thought that maybe that was the only one that was out there. So probably true. I, someone posted a while back that, um, they remember the, the hunt, when those magazines first dropped and going from city to city to hunt them down and, and get all four of them. I mean, now it's easy. You log on eBay. You can get all four for less than 30 bucks yeah. at this point. And I have, I have extras in my collection. So, um, but I, it just, it goes back to a simpler time where you're looking for something cool. What's it's cool that each guy got their own cover. It's kind of not cool. that it's the same contents in every issue. Yeah. If you remember a couple of years ago, Classic Rock did a couple of Kiss issues where they had four individual covers. The magazine contents were the same, but each magazine had a different interview based on who which Kiss member was on the cover. And I thought that was a cool touch. Yeah, Metal so, Hammer did that with the uh, with the covers and also the colored vinyl, seven inch singles in yeah. in Germany. Ken, you got anything, or had anything arrive, or ordered anything? Uh, I tried to think. Did I order anything? Yeah, that live two splatter vinyl. No, I'm I'm kidding. Um, 
I wish they had that. <laughs> but uh, no, I, nothing. Uh, I'm just waiting on that the Japan, um, you know, book to come. That one that yeah. you're showing, yes. From uh, Alan, the, the benefit um, so, of courier yeah. delivery, and apparently they've sold out now. So, uh, for oh, I saw that who's I waiting did, for I single did. issue ones to ship through that shipping method. Uh, hopefully, you'll get yours soon, but you will have reserved your copy at least for when uh, that version of airmail from Japan does open up. I bought a few, so I was able to get them couriered in, um, and you know, Ken, yours is in transit. <laughs> Somewhere in the States, oh, yeah, it's, it's, you know. So the only thing I did get, but it wasn't kits. It was a, the McCartney a three, a, a vinyl. Um, yeah. But I didn't. I would have liked to have gotten that uh, one from Third Man, which was only three hundred and thirty-three copies that they're mm. selling now. People are selling uh, because it's pre-order. Uh, it's not out yet, but they're selling it for over two thousand dollars right now. Oh. Those those colors. Yeah. I I got uh, one that was limited to fifteen hundred copies, which is a, a pink vinyl of that. Um, mm. the, that's they, they all sold out. They all sold out. Isn't I mean, there a Target exclusive? There's, there's, a, there's a, yeah, a Target a Target pre-order green that sold out. There's red ones that sold out. I think in, in UK there's a <laughs> blue. So it's it's yeah it's it's kind of crazy. Kind of like I hope I can just I hope I can just walk to the record store on December 11th, the release uh, day, and just and get the black one. You, well, uh, the indies they get uh, there's a white limited white white vinyl that goes there on. I just want the music, day. man. December 11th. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's about funny. Cause... Music. I just got the new ACDC. Holy crap! Good. Yes. You got it. When am I supposed to get that? I don't know. Oh, it's like an actual it's, vinyl? It's, or? No, it, it's, it's, re, it's released soon. Uh, reviewed copy. Um, so I ordered, yeah, I ordered uh, the CD, that special CD with the whatever line, and and the a red, is it red vinyl or orange? I don't know what color vinyl, but from their site. Yeah. Hmm. So apparently there might also be a new Foo Fighters album this year dropping mm -hmm. soon, and that probably only excites yeah. me. I love the Foo's. Me too. Well, if you remember, Julian, our, our kindred friendship started over the Foo Fighters, funny enough. You sent me a, a, a dozen Foo Fighters DVDs at one point, and, which I still have to this day. Did I? I don't yeah, you any, did. I don't have any Foo Fighters DVDs. I'm telling you, they came from you, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's why you don't have any, because you sent them all. Because you sent them to me. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not excited for a new Foo Fighters record, because it was hard for me to enjoy the last two. It was hard for me to enjoy Sonic Highways and even harder for me to enjoy Concrete and Gold. I bought both of them. Um, Wasting Light, man. I love that record front to back. What a great record. It's so hard to top Wasting Light, in my opinion. Well, interesting. Earlier albums. Mark, you were going to say something. Because I, I, the, only, the last thing I actually got was the, those CDs. There was a Japanese yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh. It's so cool. And Jealous. Dude, I'm still waiting for the book. From Alan, I haven't gotten my copy yet. Uh, he told me that mine's already shipped. I Canada has not been, you know, ex nade on the delivery. And uh, but I'm waiting on a whole ton of stuff from DavidBowie.com. They're uh, they have, they're doing this little thing where they have this like a box, special kind of custom box that you can buy, and it has they're going to be releasing six live albums from like the '93 to '99 period only, right? So it's going to be hmm. like outside. Uh, Earthling and Hours, those tours, like those time periods. And so I ordered the first one already. Uh, who is the Xi'an or something like that? It's called some weird name. And uh, that should be coming now. And also they re-released uh, Man Who Sold the World, but they're using the original title that Bowie wanted, Me Metro List or something like that. And it's in white vinyl. And it's back to that original like cartoon character album cover that they released back in the day, the U.S. version. So I'm waiting for those things, but of course, you know, they sent me the email. It is in transit, you know, and I'm waiting, sure. waiting. And so yeah. hopefully any day now, I'll see somebody come and actually physically drop it off in my mailbox. Well, hopefully it'll What's go in your mailbox, tracking, man? unlike my Kiss Alive splatter vinyl that ended up in the neighbors, and I had to get past <laughs> their a, gate and nick it. Climb a yeah. fence, run away from a dog. They're like, ste steal my own <laughs> post back. But last item I got this week was... One more of these advanced oh, nice. tape of the, of the Elder. So a uh, uh, sample. Elder. And this is the second mix, the one that actually ended up on 
um, the US version of the album. So I've got one of each now, one mm. for the original. Is it noticeably original. different? No, this is the one that was released. No, so I mean the it, one that you had before. Well, yeah, it's the, the Japanese version. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it is noticeably different. Different song order. And then, yeah, different yeah. song order. They've got the, the chanting the mixture, and all that. Yeah. Um, and I no listened escape to the, from the album island. this morning. Yeah, yes. I haven't listened to any Kiss, and that was going to be one of our topics, but uh, I just want to wrap up uh, this kind of uh, chatter section uh, of... Uh, it's the 40th anniversary of Kisteria in Australia. Mm. Ozzy, I mean, why a book. isn't there a book? I'm very disappointed. You've, uh, so, while, while, you know, I, if I need to know any dates... I, I I gotta go to my 2020 Kiss on tour, and it kind of tells me that, you know, <laughs> that today, uh, November the fifth. What does it tell you, Andrew? I'm just flipping the pages. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it's telling me that the uh, that the rehearsals began in Perth. On the next page at the entertainment <laughs> center. <laughs> <laughs> Three days of rehearsals, I believe. Oh my God! So Julian's many. got it memorized. I think. No, I've got he the really web, I've got I've got the website open, of course, and <laughs> oh, you know because yeah, so, I, I put you know. everything that was in the book is on the website, including yeah. Troy's corrections. You know, so when Troy posts, or I'll get a PM from him with a correction. I've either repeated myself sometimes. Um, he catches everything. It's actually brilliant. And then he, of course, sets us, or, and when I say us, uh, sets me off against Kurt and Jeff. Who was right? Kurt and Jeff said this. Julia says that. And sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. And it's really very entertaining, I guess, for the What a cool gallery. guy, though. I think, I think Troy is really cool. He does a great job posting all those pictures. And uh, I send some corrections for pictures from time to time. But uh, he's pretty much always spot on. And uh, such a cool Facebook page. Uh, Today in Kistory is his Facebook page. So Australia, you've got to do. Someone has got to there do should a book, be a book like, on that, like Alan that did for Kiss in Australia Japan. Thing. And you know, th there you yeah. go. You've got someone who's done it for the that country in which event. he resides. Um, I would love again Germany. Come on, German fans. It doesn't have to be in English either. Do it for your own market, just like uh, Kiss in Sweden. You oh, know that. Partners in crime. And, yeah. It, azaz has got lots of pictures, and uh, I didn't uh, the the Spanish club. They they do a ton of stuff. There's actually a book in the works with that. Is is what I can tell you now. Oh, they've done Paul Stanley solo tour. They've done yep. the cassettes. They've done the twelve inches. Yep. Um, and they're working on another book as we as we're speaking right now. I love that. Cool. I, I I obviously as someone who's done a couple of books, yes. um, you know, anytime fans put their their like effort into making something real then it's appreciated, especially when you've got it in front of you and you can mm -hmm. appreciate all the effort that's gone into it. And, you know, even when someone emails you, hey, you listed this band as opening, I was actually there. And you're like, great. <laughs> that's, cool. why, that's why I do the complimentary websites for both the Aerosmith stuff and the, the KISS stuff. Let's do some random topics off the board today because yeah. it's not been really the sort of week where you can do any kind of... Uh, you know, preparation. I've been busy again, so that is simply what it is. And one of the topics I really liked on the website um, was where can I find a clean copy of I without the watermark, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come to my house for that. Oh, God. <laughs> Hilarious. No, that's not I, the, the funniest thing about that is I there was one I think it was an indie expo that I went to right after I you know was one of the people that ended up purchasing that, and I was showing people at the table a copy of the video. They go, "Oh wow, how'd you get the watermark off?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm the one that put it on." Yeah, <laughs> nice. So if you, you know people who've been to a few expos, I showed it at the Los Angeles Expo yeah. uh, when I had the transfer done and owned the tape. Um, someone in uh, Norway, you know, showed it at Trollhattan, uh, Kiss Expo, you know, so and I've shown it at Indy when I was there for an expo in uh, Nashville. So, you know, people have had the chance to see it without the watermark. You just can't actually, well, actually people can because of where it came from, uh, probably have a copy without the watermark. But you know what? <laughs> I thought it was really cool when you guys did that and dropped it on the fans because I wasn't willing to do it. I used a little bit of it for promotional uh, purposes for mm -hmm. 
Odyssey, and that was all I was going to do, and then I sat on it. But then you guys, you know, had an opportunity. You took it, and you put it out for everyone to see. So more mm-hmm. power to you than me who just Like it or not, it. yeah, like it or not, you didn't know if you were going to like it or not until we put it out for everybody to see it. So yeah. there are some people out there that are like, oh, I didn't even like this. I'm like, well, man, you wouldn't even know that you didn't like it unless it was for us guys that put it out for you. But it was legendary for its campiness and how bad it was yeah. and also how the audience was a whole bunch of all-coin office uh, <laughs> people. And, and, and uh, uh, Vinny Street. Gonzalez is in there, too. Vinny. Fat Vinny. Vinny Gonzalez. Yeah, he, he is so cool. It's, uh, those That guy and his stories. Wow. All right, so uh, moving on to real topic. And uh, Did you kiss yourself today? Are you wearing something kiss-related? Acquire mm-hmm. some kiss memorabilia? <laughs> Listen to a kiss album, song, or watch concert footage today? Did you learn a kiss tune on an instrument or learn a new piece of kiss trivia? Mark. Hmm. Well, interestingly enough, um, before, uh, when I was taking a break from some of the things I was doing, I did actually put this on and listen to it, and it's really good. I mean, it sounds fantastic, and one of the things that I didn't know, because, I mean, yes, I'm a KISS fan, and I consider myself a pretty big KISS fan, but I'm not like one of these elite-level ones that know every little minute little detail, and I didn't realize that on here, uh, that one song here the, from Paul Stanley's album, uh, the one with, with that Carmine Apice drums on. Take me uh, away. There's, yeah, that take me. Yes, it. He, they didn't do the fade out on it. This is a complete, like, proper dead stop ending on this version, which I had never heard before. So, uh, yeah. that was kind of a cool. surprise. Uh, listening to that, I was kind of oh, so I clearly remember Carmine going off the rails there on the original, and then kind of the like fading out, you know. But I was like, hey, there, there's no fade out here. So I was kind of like, that's cool. So, and it sounds really good. I mean, you know. The Japanese always do these really fantastic sort of pressings. And ever since Julian kind of uh, steered me toward that CD Japan store, uh, Mm -hmm. I have become hooked on it. And I think my bank account is going to start crying because I'm expecting a whole whack of these style CDs. But I'm getting the yes ones. And Mm -hmm. like I'm looking for all kinds of different bands that have these sort of styled the CDs coming in. I'm expecting like yes drama, yes fragile now, a whole bunch of these ones in that style. So uh yeah i I highly recommend this because if you haven't actually listened to it yet it sounds sonically very 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 good so if you if you're on the fence don't be because it sounds really really good i'll uh just mention to you that i actually discovered that cd japan has a youtube page today Uh and they did unveilings of these in september i think they were um opening them up showing you all the inserts and you know just something worth checking out so um if I if I can find that link, I'll post it in the show notes. But if not, go on YouTube because it, and just search for CD Japan, and uh, they had the double platinum, and they did uh, the best solos, and that was mm-hmm. the the only one. Also read uh, today on Facebook. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember who who posted it. That the print quality of the Kiss Killers cover is the absolute best they have ever seen that image. So mm-hmm. something else that you can appreciate from the quality that's going into these releases. Ken, did you kiss yourself today? Yeah, well, I kiss myself all over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Wait, wasn't no, that an no, exile I, song I mean, in the seventies? I mean, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, you know, I normally kiss T-shirt. I checked out the Kiss FAQ. I, I did see that uh, that video that was posted of Kiss in Germany, right? For the That's a lot. yeah, that pro, yeah, yeah. That was that was, it was like fourteen minutes. Uh, I, I think I've seen that before, but I think it's been a long time. I but believe it's game. called Schuler Express. Correct me if I'm wrong, Julian. Right. Schuler Express, because it's a little longer. There's like a, a girl who is like in school and fantasizing she about. She makeup. Yeah. She's riding stands. in the back of a motorcycle with someone with a kiss wig and makeup on, and you know, it's it's actually yeah, it's, you know it's actually pretty cool. I I always really like that clip. It is a uh, pretty good quality, and I know I had seen it a long time ago. I think, uh, or at least parts of it. Uh, so, th- so that was good. Um, so, otherwise, you know, I haven't listened to any Kiss yet today, other than watching that uh, little short documentary. Yeah, I, I have not. I've been listening to an unreleased Aerosmith live album repeatedly uh, for the last few days. So, I've not been listening to any Kiss. I have 
been on the message board. I've managed not to ban anyone today, which is really cool. Hey, um, day's not over. And I, I did read a few <laughs> threads. I've been on Facebook, and I, you know, obviously read the Rockology, Rock, yeah, Rockology. Getting those two words confused. I've actually mm -hmm. been on Kiss Online today. I wanted to go through and see what they were listing up as their news this week, and November the first, which now is just a few days ago. Um, they have Kiss signed their first record contract with Neil Bogart's Casablanca Records. So uh, obviously that is an anniversary. I believe they actually signed their deal with Rocksteady, who signed with Casablanca. But I'd have to take the contracts out to actually read it. They've also they've noted the 40th anniversary, or without saying 40 in big capital letters, of uh, Kisteria in Australia, which is cool. Um, but I think one of the cool things that happened this day six years ago was kiss rocks vegas yeah so i mm -hmm. think i'm going to take a break from that aerosmith Jeez. album and play kiss rocks vegas tonight since i was there for that opening night and they've got a photo of them getting out of the helicopter um you know and it was such a fun kiss event that yeah i think that's my going to be my evening chill out just because i think i've got the apple version on my ipad so i can just crash out and watch that later so I haven't kissed myself yet, but I How many versions will. of Kiss Vegas did you buy? Kiss Rock Vegas did you buy? I got, I got the uh, deluxe ones, the English or the U or the European part of me, and the uh, and the US, and then I got rid of those because they were too big, and I've just got like the little dinky CD pack now. Um, I do have the LP uh, from somewhere, I think. Yeah, yeah, the LP. I got yeah. the the LP, the Blu-ray, and then. Because neither one of those were in stock when they came out. I bought it on iTunes as well. Yeah, I, I got yeah. it initially on iTunes because I, I wanted to watch it immediately and I didn't have a chance to get out and get it. So um, it's still, it's, it's actually one that still resonates well. It's not just that I was there and went to the residency. I, I think it was just fun. But to be in that audience, yeah, I, I want to relive that event. Andrew, so what about you? Did you kiss yourself today? Yeah, I listened to The Elder on the way to work today, funny enough. I, I don't know, I just I just really wanted to listen to Only You, and I listened to Only You and mm. uh, Under the Rose on my way in. And Under then the Rose, um, yeah. while I was um, working today, I had on the New Jersey 96-97 uh, concert, my first one. So, yeah, I mean, I, I kiss myself every day. I really do. Mm. Either I'm working on something. Or, you know, I'm listening to something. But, yeah, I, I do it I do it quite often. I still I say it all the time. I still enjoy this. So, uh, yeah, I do it every day. Yeah, usually we try and just celebrate the band as much as possible on, on these shows. Because when you get together, yeah. you don't really want to go negative, especially yeah. uh, in a year like 2020. But I do want to you know, go into one topic which has come up with quite a bit of gold. And that is, what do you think was the worst 80s kiss moment? Um <laughs> And the 80s are kind of an era with the band that have an overabundance of gold in terms of Paul and his trapeze act or circus act for the You Make Me Rock Hard video, which I, I think for me is one of those really cringeworthy mm -hmm. moments that obviously became very cool when it was transformed into a zip line during a live worldwide. Um, so he took his flying to a whole new level. But Paul Stanley raps. Ken, you know, what are some of the kind of things from the 80s that just make you shudder? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, looking back at it now, uh, I think the originally it was a couple of things. One is the Lick It Up tour. Uh, when they did that, they, they didn't know. They didn't know what how to dress or look on stage. And then they had the... Uh, the makeup, you know, like the women, you know, blush makeup on there and the stuff around that too much around the eyes and stuff. Uh, it was too glam uh, for them. Uh, they didn't need to do that. They were kind of, I guess, trying to find themselves right after being in the makeup, the real makeup uh, <laughs> um, and the costumes. So, yeah, especially Gene was out of out of sorts. You know, he was kind of still trying to be mean gene uh and it just it didn't look the same as you know when he had the makeup otherwise um yeah that was one thing and everything is the for a real low for me was the crazy nights 
live tour. That that was just a, a really big. Well, first of all, you know, Crazy Nice is too, you know, slick, of course, but the actual tour itself was a total let down that their li- the live show it was just it was my least favorite kiss show um usually every kiss show you come out and you're like that was great that was great you know it was great that one is the only one that i can say i came out and said that i did not say that was great mm-hmm. i thought what is going on i was thinking what is going on with him you know they're just you know going through the motions kind of thing um, in that on that show. So those are those are a couple of things that uh, mm-hmm. stand out to me. Now you mentioned "Lick It Up" and that jogged my yeah. memory quick, quickly for uh, a very very cool guy, the Kiss Books guy, Roger Bernard, has been mm-hmm. sharing some of his photos from the "Lick It Up" tour, March 12, nineteen eighty four, in Quebec, and these are absolutely stunning photographs uh yeah. someone has posted some of them on the faq but look him up on facebook his photos f- from that show and some of the backstage and other things are just absolutely incredible and you know what we talk about how gene looked uncomfortable out of makeup these mm-hmm. pictures of gene actually t- tell me a completely different story of him during that awkward phase for him because his costume and what he's wearing, the bits and pieces, um, including a sweatshirt under a t-shirt, or abs- it just is <laughs> compared to like the Paul. Pirate boots. Yeah, the, pi- the elder pirate boots. Uh, right, yeah. yeah, the pirate boots. It, right. His <laughs> photos are absolutely stunning. And I, I just can't say enough superlatives about them. Um, Andrew, 80s. Well, I've never been a big 80s Kiss fan. Um, I would consider Animalize much more of a misstep than Lick It Up because I thought Lick It Up, they were still kind of hungry. But I'm going to agree with Ken uh, with Crazy Nights. That's The album production is a little too slick for my tastes. And especially the bootlegs and stuff on that American leg of that tour, you saw a band that was just confused. They were hoping to scale the heights that bands like Heart and Ozzy did when they had Nevison come on board. And then you listen to the album and you're like, ah, this is like Bon Jovi kiss, which we've said so many times before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's just, it's one of those things where I, I, it's an era I always overlook and the band overlooks it as well. So probably crazy nights. Yeah. I I read a thread on the FAQ that, or maybe it was another website that does the animalize era get a, an overly harsh view and that'll be that'll make a good topic down the road i think you know f- mm-hmm. for that whole thing mark you know what are what are some of the things that kind of stick out in your mind for the worst of 80s kiss well i i set set myself up nicely for this because there's a moment in kiss history that really did not sit good with me and my friends who are big kiss fans uh when this happened we literally looked at each other and thought to ourselves, why? Why in God's name are they doing this? This makes absolutely no sense at all. And I will just show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. oh, is that <laughs> yep. when they were Oprah? Yep. Uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey episode with Paul and Jean, okay? Now, yeah. when, when, like, I mean, Oprah Winfrey was one of these shows that were not, you know, deemed as very cool, obviously, amongst us rock guys who are, you know, into Kiss and all these other kinds of bands. And, you know, it was it was the kind of show that, like, my mom would watch, right? And so all of a sudden, you turn the TV on, and there's Oprah with her huge hair, and Paul and them sitting there, and they're talking about all their exploits. And we were looking at each other going, why are they doing this? It's, it's so, so lame. Like, why are they on this TV show? Like, they should be doing, like, cool shows, not Oprah Winfrey. Like, this mm-hmm. is... The most What's ridiculous cool show, thing. Downey? <laughs> no, I mean like any kind of like <laughs> like anything else, it would be cooler than going on Oprah Winfrey. I mean, you know, by this time, I mean MTV must have been rolling, so you know, there's got to be some other thing that you can go on, or I mean, just anything in our eyes was better. And you know, but don't don't forget too, what we know about as far as kids being shunted by MTV and stuff like that. 
you know, back in the day, we had no clue about that. Like only years later, when you start digging into their, you know, the history of what happened and why and stuff like that, now you realize why, right? But back then, you would the first thing you were thinking is, why are they on some cool shows like on Much Music or you know something like that? It's they're on <laughs> Oprah. It doesn't make any sense, you know. No, Paul got to host Headbangers Ball, didn't he? So they'd been on some. He did a lot of MTV VJing. Yeah. Between eighty-five mm-hmm. and eighty-nine, a lot. Well, there of you stuff. go. So <laughs> that's better, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I guess it's you know, is what it is. Is All it right, we'll... is it better though? Because I think it's a little. Uh, it's just as cheesy. There's a um, a New Year's Eve show that Paul VJed on MTV, and mm-hmm. he's like climbing over a couch, eating pizza with like just some very plastic looking women and I don't know I think they're both equally I think they're both they're not both cheesy but they're both products of their time yeah and that's okay, what happened yeah, at that time completely cringeworthy oh, equally yeah. yeah but 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 back then though back then when you're like you know and you're 19 or 20 years old or whatever you are watching it you were expecting that more than you were expecting Oprah Winfrey you were expecting Paul to hang out with like you know you know, made up women that, you know, look ridiculous now, but back in the day, it didn't look so ridiculous, you know? I, 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 I'm going to challenge you there because you had Paul tumbling over a couch with, with all these women. And then the next night you could watch behind the iron curtain from Iron Maiden. Like that's the kind of stuff I think that fans of the time wanted to see. I don't, I, I don't think that the, the hardcore fans or the general populace of fans wanted to see the VJs. I think it was just something that, hey, this is silly, this is fun. Okay. So I, I think it was equally as cringeworthy then. I, I just mean like in comparison, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If I was to compare yeah. just those two situations, I think people would have rather seen him being the, you know, VJing than being on Oprah, I think. Yeah, at least. Well, you're right. I think you're right about that. The bar was pretty low. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> and yeah. for, Ki- for Kiss in particular in the 1980s, there you go. Um, f- for me, wow. I don't know. Cringeworthy, or or was uh, well, I don't know. Probably the, the entire blue... Hot in the Shade album. No, that's going to be the next question. Actually, uh, I think probably the Blue <laughs> Thong. <laughs> that is cringeworthy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Blue Thong. <laughs> yeah. That, that I still haven't recovered from that. Um, and Andrew, since you mentioned uh, Hot in the Shade, there was actually a poll on the message board recently. Shows how often I'm there. Um, oh, and yeah. what is the biggest problem with hits? One thing that you can say makes it the biggest problem. Too many songs? Or Gene and Paula's producers? Or um, polished up demos just sound terrible? Not enough good songs? <laughs> they picked the wrong songs. Unused demos are way better than what made the album. True. Or it lacks cohesion. Which one of these... <laughs> Or if you have your own, do you think is all of the above? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not allowed, but yeah. Ken. Not oh, allowed. Sorry. Okay. There you go. You Are go it? first. Which one? Well, I, I so yeah, I did answer that one actually on the board, and I just said because I could do all of the above. I did uh, too many songs. I thought, yeah, they they narrowed it down to. Uh, it, the the ten best songs uh, that they had, um, it it would have been a lot a, a lot stronger of an album. Because um, yeah, there's there's some throwaways on there definitely that uh, you kind of you know scratch your head about. Yeah, fair enough. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, not enough good songs because there mm-hmm. were some very good songs on there like forever. And you can have a 63-minute album that's absolutely outstanding. Uh, Hysteria, just maybe not a 63-minute six uh, kiss mm-hmm. album. Uh, Hysteria, being, being being the difference. So I I think not enough no. good songs because you go f- you go from very good or exceptional ones that are kind of classics down to Read My Body, uh, King of Hearts. Uh, Silver Spoon. Silver Spoon. Yeah, you know. Some, like some, dreams. Yeah. Well, no, I like I like Dreams, but you know. But then, there, there's definitely five or more songs <laughs> on there that are really kind of um, not worthy. 
Mm-hmm. Andrew. I'm going to echo what I said on the board. It's not rock and roll over. That's the biggest problem. No, th- it, it, it's there's <laughs> not enough good songs. It really just needed to be like 10 kick-ass songs. And man, go into a studio, cut it on you know six on sixteen track. The drum sounds are so obvious on some of those songs. And uh, give Eric Carr another song. Uh, throw Eyes of Love on there. That would have been so cool to hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the demos do sound better. So, um, but you still got cool songs like Rise to It, Hide Your Heart, Somewhere Between Heaven and Hell, Betrayed, Forever, uh, Silver Spoon. But then after that, it's like man, a lot of crap. Not enough good songs. All right, Mark. <laughs> what well, is Hits's problem? I think it boils down to one thing. And the one thing can remedy all the other things that you talked about, which is putting Paul and Gene as producers was the biggest mistake and has always been the biggest mistake for Kiss because when they're left in charge, there's many errors that happen. And the first error is that they let so many songs on there because you know how it is. No, oh, let me get a song. Let me get a song. You know, everybody wants to. I want six if you got six, and I want seven if you have seven. Out of the pie, they go, yeah, exactly. So everybody's bickering over who gets on there. And when you would have had a producer, you can say, no, 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 we're doing these songs, and that's it. I mean, you can, you can complain all you want about, you know, albums like Psycho Circus. But I mean, I'd rather have Bruce mm-hmm. Fairburn at the helm who can make a solid decision as a producer and say, no, no, we're working on these songs and that's the end of that, you know, mm-hmm. or even, you know, Eddie Kramer did a good job, you know, and, and you know, even God forbid, I'll say it, you oh, know, Ezra. Bob, Bob <laughs> Ezrin. Oh, God, it hurts oh, yeah. for me to even say that probably did <laughs> a decent job in that regard to probably just siphon out what's not needed on the record and put what's mm-hmm. on there and then ruin it with piano over dubs and other nonsense. <laughs> and monks chanting. <laughs> but I, I, I would, I, I would say it didn't work so well with Ron Nevison though, did it? When you think of some well, of the material that actually made it onto that album and some of yeah. the stuff that did not, you know, and you I know, always shockingly. So I, so you, I think if you have a, if you're going to use the producer as the kind of, would have brought something to the project and cut some of the fluff out. I, I think you have to have a neutral producer. Okay, but here's the thing. I always wondered this, and we'll never know for sure definitively, but I almost got the get the feeling that it wouldn't have mattered who they got. You know, they could have had, you know, the the greatest producer ever to walk the face of the earth to come in and produce that. And I still think that there was an element of people who were just tired of Kiss in general. They would have never have gotten to that point, I think, as an Aussie did or a Hart did. I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't play opinion on Nevison. I can understand, you know, there were things that maybe he could have did differently to make it a better record. But to blame it on him, I don't know. I just think that there was just something not cool about Kiss at that time, maybe. There was just something that, you know, it, it's just, it's hard to explain because Nevison did great with everybody else. Why would it be that it was only with them that he didn't have such a great record? You know, It was, it was too contrived. And and Ozzy doesn't count as an example because he basically replaces his guitarist every couple of albums and that's his songwriter. And Kiss is too late, I mean, to the game. They were, you know, they, they followed. They've always been. Instead of not leading on that, and and that music style had kind of, I think, come and gone, and it wasn't, it wasn't unique, you know, you know, on their own from the, from these other the other music out there. Well, you had you had um, kind of vanilla. Uh, you had a point of change at that point too. You had these really slick sounding '80s bands like Poison and and all that, but. Towards the towards like eighty nine ninety, you had like a lot of blues coming in. Like Cinderella was doing a blues mm-hmm. record, and all these mm-hmm. bands were doing these big blues records, and and everything was back to you know leather and and you know real musicians. Uh, and I think Kiss was stuck in that transition period. They wanted to be this, you know, they wanted to be the Jimi Hendrix uh, of their era, and they just weren't. But you had these other bands that that had huge success. I mean, the Heartbreak Station tour was huge. It was selling yeah. at arenas, you know, across the across the United States. Kiss was barely doing it. They needed Slaughter at that point because Slaughter was was coming up. Even Doctor Feelgood has a lot of blues elements in it as well too. And I just 
I think Kiss mm-hmm. wanted to do something like that, but they just didn't know how to do something like that. And there were, you know, too many other legacy acts who'd reinvented themselves yeah. successfully. I mean, again, yeah. you, you, it's hard not to draw the parallels with Aerosmith's career rebirth from going, you know, with a run DMC, getting lucky with that, obvious, very lucky with that, yeah. but then coming yeah. back with Permanent Vacation, bringing in all the external songwriters, the hot mm-hmm. producer, and absolutely knocking it out. I mean, that, that was a home run. They did the same sort of thing. How many hits were on that album? You know, so how many bands from the 70s tried to reinvent themselves? Ted Nugent did and failed miserably with uh, Little Miss Dangerous. And, you know, basically mm. had, to, had to do the damn Yankees to get relevant again. And but only, I love damn Yankees. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not criticizing them. He got relevant again with them with some very catchy rock and True. roll. And then the moment he was not in damn Yankees anymore, uh, became irrelevant again. So... Big Buffalo. Uh, Blue Oyster Cold, I think, had their last like kind of moments of glory as well. And same with Cheap Trick with the Doctor. Around so. eighty or eighty two, yeah. 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 I mean Cheap Trick was, was basically irrelevant in the eighties until they had like little hits like She's Tight and If You Want My Love, but once the mm-hmm. flame hit giant huge hit. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, and again, Heart, they had a, a complete rebuild and they're a seventies yeah. act. So yeah. People uh, forget that they're a '70s act too. People Quite often. completely forget. Music's much best. better from the '70s. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I like Passion Works. I like. I, I like mean, I mean, here's the thing. You you went from you went from an era of music, and I'm talking about the '70s. Went from an, an era of music where it, it was almost like it was ugly people making great music, and then in the '80s, it was these beautiful people making. I'm not that great of music anymore. You made a you made a good point. You made a good point though, Andrew, because back then, even record label people like Ahmed Erdogan and them would have, would tell you that they were less concerned about image. They were more concerned about good music, right? They were more concerned about because you know radio was king then, right? There wasn't as much emphasis yeah. on the look because you were just listening to music then, right? So people, you know, bands like you know the Yeses and the Genesis and all this, they can make these long drawn out record because as long as there's a couple of things on there that can get played on the radio and push a record you know Amit and those guys were happy with that right and let them do whatever the hell they wanted but then as you know MTV started and all these things you know and bands like the Buggles came out was you know video killed the radio star and all these kind of other things then it all started changing everything started changing it was all emphasis on you know this guy has to look good you know, this guy needs to get a haircut and you know some hairspray and we're going to put him on front and front there you know like and then all of a sudden the emphasis changed. It's like, as long as the song is decently good and you look good in the video, like White Snake, like look at when they did their major, you know, 180 there when they became huge in '87. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because and people forget there was a, a whole other band before yeah. that time period. I mean, to me, White Snake ended with Slide It In in '84, but yeah. you could even tell there were there were glimmers of Slide It In where they were going towards this really arena rock like sound, which. Yeah. I don't think Slide It In is a bad record, but once you no. get to the self-titled listen, 87 listen, LP... Listen like to the, the European version of Slide yeah. you know, yeah. which before it got all tarted up for the American market, completely different albums. It was closer to the blues-based rock that Coverdale was so good at. And, you know, my favorite Whitesnake album, Slide It In. Uh, not yeah. Slide It In, uh, Saints and Sinners, pardon me. Yeah, same um, here. Saints and Sinners. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. But again, you know, uh, again, a band that was big basically everywhere else in the world than the U.S., but just becoming big in the U.S. was a completely different market. You know who died yesterday? Or was it this morning? The guy Ken Hensley? The... Uriah, yeah, Uriah Blackfoot? Yeah, Ken Hensley. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was in Blackfoot for a couple albums. So, After the, the one that's yeah. titled I Can Never Say Properly? Tom Catton? C- no, Siago or whatever it is. Oh, C- uh, yeah. Yeah, is someone saying Siogo? Siago. Yeah, that yeah. one. And of course, he was on one of my favorite Wasp albums. I won't say what that stands for, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last question for today. And this is a, a what if. What if Kiss hung it, up af- hung it up after the failure of Creatures of the Night? How do you think they would have been remembered? Or would they have been forgotten? Ken, since you were there at multiple shows. <laughs> but yeah, it's multiple shows. Creatures. So, yeah, it was a big failure for them. Um, it wasn't a failure. You know, I thought it was great. It's just, 
everyone, their fan base, a lot more, most of their fan base was gone. Therefore, the no, you know, the album sales were down and, and they're, they're con- you know, they couldn't sell out a concert. They could barely fill, fill the, you know, these arenas um, or amphitheaters at that time, I guess. Um, so, um, yeah, it was great for me, but if they had decided, you know, this is just, you know, they're end on a good note kind of thing. The Creatures album was a good in in quality and music and, and it rocked and the whole bit, you know, they, they could have ended it there, I guess. And, and then, you know, that would have been it. Um, I don't know what would have happened after that as far as even maybe not even a reunion who knows um but how would they have been you know remembered like say now going back i don't they wouldn't have been i don't think remembered as they might have been remembered more like a uh uh some people would probably remember as oh they were a kitty band and blah 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 kind of thing uh just just looking at because they didn't last long um so I thought oh it's just it was just a, a fad of the you know the mid 70s late 70s and stuff like that they had their moment but then you know they're like menudo or something whatever <laughs> you know <Menudo. laughs> so yeah yeah I know <laughs> so and which is kind of that way um that's how I think some people I mean being a kiss fan I never I never lit up being a kiss fan I still would have I knew I would have known that that is not correct because of the great music that they did, you know, produce during that time period. Um, but yeah, other people and and critics and uh, so and so, Rolling Stones, you know, Rolling Stones, like yeah, see, I told you they were no good. They couldn't, you know, they didn't last like the Rolling Stones and all these other bands or whatever. Um, so I think they would have been somewhat forgotten. Uh, maybe it would have been some kind of a, a cult type, you know, following still. Maybe, you know, Andrew would have, you know, found them or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the internet in the, <laughs> in the 90s. That's actually 90s. what I think they are. They're actually one of the most famous and biggest cult bands. I actually feel like we are sometimes a bit cultish in we are kind of our following on. and how we behave towards them when you know they didn't have that many hits true they mm-hmm. haven't sold albums on a comparable level to many of the biggest acts in the world um that sure. there's a lot of hype that goes with them and i wouldn't change it a bit because i love them to death there you go yeah yeah well said. yeah andrew how would they be I mean, remembered i mean what else could you say about that i mean i think you, you hit it the nail on the head I think the reason why the reunion did so great is because you had this other product that was out at the time and people were remembering about how great it was back then. If they had just left it back then, I don't know if the, they would have cared if they had come back because they would be like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. But people were so hungry after going through all the other stuff that was around at the time. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it, it's an interesting question. We are very cult-like. Kiss has like blips of extreme popularity, whether it be in 2009, 2019, or 1996. I don't know. It's such a difficult question to answer because they've been such a they've been a, such a big part of my life for my entire life that um, I couldn't imagine a world without them. So to say, what would it be like if they they quit before you were born? Would I have found them? Maybe, but who knows? Who knows? Yeah. It's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I think initially, if they'd called it quits in 82, they'd be more remembered for kind of the Disney kiss, mm. because that would have been Super closer. Kiss. But then yeah. the, the great bombastic stuff would have emerged, because people would be seeing what Motley Crue had been doing, you know, as it became more known, or the Wasps, or the other bands that were influenced by much of what right. Kiss had done, you know, in merchandising. I think ultimately that would come through regardless of whether they were there and i think that would then have indeed led to a reunion down the road regardless of whether we had the 80s kiss and the different lineups and the different images ultimately just because people would 
go back and start remembering when they got into their 20s or later. Mm. Oh, man, I remember when I was a kid? So I come right. back to the kids. Actually, let me, let, me, let me just spit right before Mark does his opinion on that. Uh, let me just ask this question real quick. Do you think Kiss would have been in the Hall of Fame had they, Rock and Hall of Fame, had they quit? And it already took as long as it did, but no, they always they hated. Been, no, those those twats mm -hmm. always hated them. They probably would have never. It, they'd probably still not be in there. Yeah, right it, it was uh, it pay pay to play is alive and I'm well. Gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it this way. I think that if they would have ended it in '82, that eventually there would have been a reunion. Why? Because one thing that Kiss relied on later on in the 80s and 90s and so on and so forth yeah. is, and they were very lucky in this, was that they started getting really good press from cool bands. Dimebag Daryl. Ace mm. Man is the greatest guitar player ever. When you started having bands like this sure. that people thought were amazing, we started bringing up Kiss again. All of a sudden, it wasn't uncool to like Kiss anymore amongst these people. You know, and that's a big thing because a lot of times you see nowadays when bands are struggling, keep your keep your eye out and watch. When you start seeing in the press other bands talking up bands, you know, I remember when so and so was back in the you know seventies and they were really cool. They bands try to do favors for one another to get them back and get their momentum rolling again. And I mean, I can't tell you how many times I saw covers in guitar magazines with you know Dimebag and Ace together, or mm -hmm. you know. There was like times when there was like Tony Iommi and Eddie Van Halen together on there, you know, Eddie trying to give a little nudge for, you know, re-kicking Black Sabbath, you know, gear back into motion there. You know, things like that happen. And if they would have disappeared in 82, it would have been one of those sad, you know, things on A&E, you know, like Kiss, the greatest band in the 70s. Then they made a big mistake in the 80s. They released <laughs> Unmasked and The Elder, and then they tried to come back in 82, but it was too late. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then that's what probably would have happened. And then years later, I think that when all these other bands started coming up and around and started saying, you know, hey, Alive was the greatest record I've ever heard. You know, because lots of bands did that. Everybody from Fred Durst to, to, to Dimebag Skid to Row. all kinds of people. Yeah, yeah, Skid Row. You know, lots of bands that became really hip and popular at the time, you know, started citing Kiss. You know, I mean, in, in, the, in the Pantera home video, there's a great segment where they're doing Love Gun Kiss, and you see Dimebag and Vinnie Paul at the side stage dancing around and singing Love Gun, like on the side of the stage, it's like they're total <laughs> fanboying it, you know? So, I mean, stuff like that, you would be very surprised how much impact that has in re-kicking a band's popularity amongst younger people, which is what they desperately needed, too. I think you nailed it, Mark, because how many bands have an Ed Sullivan moment in their history? Uh, that moment zeitgeist or whatever it is you, you know elvis on mm -hmm. tv in 56 the yeah. beatles in 64 uh paul lind in 76 for kiss mm -hmm. or you know maybe one of the ones a little bit Tiny later Tim. tom snyder mm -hmm. you know how many bands have those massive moments that resonate through the decades that inspire the next generation to go and pick up their guitars or an instrument mm -hmm. so I, I i agree with you i i think no matter what it comes back to a reunion would have happened because you would never have a band that called it quits in 82 after trying to come back not get back together having a paul lind moment for once that next generation started doing interviews and say i was growing up man I, you know I had, a, yeah. I had a bad upbringing, but then, you know, I saw Paul Lind and I picked up a guitar. You know, the same story that Paul Stanley and so many others tell of seeing mm -hmm. the Beatles and the inspiration yep. that it had, even to this day. So, mm -hmm. you know, wow, we're ending on a kumbaya note. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's a nice. big circle. Circle uh, of love. His army unite. Yeah. You know, there <laughs> we are we one. Go. Yeah, <laughs> drink your Kool-Aid, you know. All right, there we go. That's our show for this week. Just a whole bunch of randomness again. We do appreciate you joining us. We hope you're staying well and healthy out there and surviving the insanity of 2020. Just know there's more releases coming down the road. Uh, I'm going to get my CD Japan shipping notice imminently since that last album that uh, was queued up for release is now available. And then I'll be waiting for the two Peter first ones. So... 
check yeah. out the FAQ for all these topics. We just get them from the board. We get other people to do our thinking for us for our topics. <laughs> but for now, from Ken, from Andrew, Mark, and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.